The next is, is called uh, uh, Tudor's pseudo R square. So here I'm not very clear about the pronunciation, but Tudor, let's call Tudor's R square. Tudor's R square here basically is D equal to this number minus that number. And from here, probably you can guess why it's related to a pretty probability, right? Right? So here, one, a pi one hat bar and pi zero hat bar denote model based averages of fitted values. So for every single observation, we're going to calculate its pretty probability for y equal to one and the pretty, prob pretty probability for, well, for y equal to zero for every single case in our estimation sample. Then what we're going to do, so for all the probability, all the probabilities, okay, for y equal to one, we're going to average cross, that's this number. And all the probabilities y equal to zero, we're going to average across. Okay, get those average, take a difference. Okay, take a difference. Yeah. And what is the rationale here? Well, the rationale basically here is the best model gonna um, better uh, discriminate between these two, right? The difference is gonna be bigger, gonna be bigger, right? Okay, so the idea is pretty simple. And uh, here, in general, uh, expert um, Paul Ellison, a very prominent applied statistician, okay, also a sociologist, applied statisti statistician, um, and uh, he proposes okay, without very, uh, very, very strong evidence, but he thinks that uh, uh, this teachers R square and Macbeth's R square are the better choices out of all. But again, there's no definitive evidence, definitive evidence, okay? And here, let me get into the last category that is goodness of fit test. So here we have a test, it's called Hosmer Lamashow goodness of fit test. And, and both, well, okay, um, these two authors, um, uh, they co-author a book is, is called Applied uh, Logistic Regression. And in that book, well, um, they proposed this test in, uh, in a paper in 1980. Then they included uh, the discussion of this test in their uh, book. So it's called Hosmer uh, Lamashow, or sometimes called HL test. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna order all cases based on estimated probabilities, right? So after running binary regression model, we can calculate the predictive probability, right? Estimate We're gonna order all the probabilities and cut them into 10 equal size groups. So from the lowest to highest, right? We're, we're gonna cut it into 10. It does not have to be 10, but 10 is the minimum usually. And the 10 is, well, I shouldn't say minimum, but 10 is probably optimal. And the total number sometimes uh, is uh, uh, uncertain. And that is a caveat, actually, one criticism on this test. And then we're going to calculate the following. It's called C statistic. So, so remember that we have 10 groups, right? And uh, we're going to calculate this, this uh, C statistic. And here we have O1G, E1G hat and O0G and EOG hat. What are these numbers? Okay, O1G is the sum of frequency for Y equal to one. So for in group one, we're gonna count, actually the outcome, the total number of, of cases that have Y equal to one. Okay, in group one, okay? Then we can do, you know, group two, group three, but let's focus on group one, right? 1G, that is G equal to one here. So for G equal to one, we're, we're gonna count, or for group G, right? We're gonna count the sum of frequency for Y equal to one. So number of cases was Y equal to one. Then E1G hat, so in group G, is the sum of predicted probabilities for Y equal to one. So for every single case, okay? There is a predicted probability, Y equal to one. Even though some cases they have y equal to zero, but still have a probability of y equal to one. So we're gonna add them up. It'll become this number. And we subtract them 
square that divided by E1G hat. Then what we're going to do, we're going to do the same for y equal to zero. So that's for one group. Then we're going to do, we're going to do is group two, group three, group four, five, till group 10. Add them up, summation sign. We get this C statistic. And this C statistic is considered, uh, you know, is, is um, uh, this statistic follows a chi-square distribution with a degree of freedom of G minus two, G minus two. And here, part of discussion is cut out, but basically a statistically significant result uh, what correspond to a poor model fit because observed and expected, basically this is observed frequency and expected frequency, right? Uh, there's a huge difference. Then we have a big C statistic. Well, if this C hat has a small value, okay, a small chi-square value, or uh, it turns out to uh, be a statistically insignificant result, then we say a model fit is pretty good. It's pretty good. Again, you know, a lot of times we, we pick the conventional val, uh, level of 0 0.05, 0.05. And, and what does a statistically insignificant result imply? Well, that implies the observed and expected don't have a lot of difference. Uh, which means, well, our model actually, you know, uh, fares relatively well in, predict, in predicting the outcome because the difference is small. Okay. And uh, this concludes uh, all my discussion of hypotheses testing. A lot of, lot of information. So very loaded, loaded uh, chapter or module, or modules. But, um, you know, we have lab guides and videos for you to review and, uh, and uh, dig into details. So, uh, and you can always stop my video and review uh, multiple times and check out my uh, lecture notes and uh, hope you can learn a lot out of this. Thank you.